Uh, my name is uh, Joseph Kinyoro Masharia, uh, Principal Technologies in Egerton University, where I teach and conduct uh, research. We are involved in conventional training, conventional agriculture training of students, and uh, we have also incorporated the, 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 the modern or recent uh, need for organic farming. And uh, the need for organic farming has come as a result of uh, the need for organic products in the market. And uh, organic products are in other countries, they're in the US, they're in Europe, and they started a long time ago in the Asian countries. And uh, the conventional agriculture, or, uh, which leads to conventional products, uh, has issues. And uh, to address the issues is uh, misuse of uh, agrochemicals and fertilizers and the environment, the pollution of the environment. And uh, the, the people have raised concern uh, about the food, the quality of the food they eat. And uh, as, uh, as people are concerned with the production of food, Organic agriculture comes in as a, uh, to provide some of those solutions. And uh, since organic agriculture is, uh, is uh, in this country, uh, it's been growing slowly because of uh, policy issues. And, uh, but the farmers, there are farmers uh, who do organic agriculture in their farms, a small scale farm. And uh, because they are also part of the farming community, the organic movement with many partners and many players come, uh, come on board to assist the farmers in training them, in certifying their products, and even in marketing of their products. Now, uh, if you ask Kenyans, most of them will say I'm a farmer also because they know they have an idea of what to grow and they can grow. So uh, with the current innovations of um, you know, story gardens, you can use a wall, you can use um, limited space, uh, you know, balcony of houses and, and, and the pathways. And uh, by the way, even like the flowers we have here, if these were, uh, you know, vegetables, they would be very beautiful and you get food out of it. So even uh, we, we, with the current innovation, it's possible to grow, to grow, you know, vegetables, what we consume most of the time. We may not grow cereals, but we can grow vegetables and fruits in very small, limited spaces. That technology is there. And uh, the water conservation, most of the water, this country has uh, too much water. It's ironical because uh, we say we don't have enough water. We have so much water from rain. If we harness harvesting, water harvesting, we would have less problems. But, uh, you know, you need a concerted effort. Just like they have uh, put a lot of money into uh, road infrastructure. I would hope that uh, in future we'll have, uh, you know, government put resources in water harvesting and, and uh, the water that is harvested and uh, stored can be used in food production. That will have a multiply effect in the job creation and, and, and the other attendant industries will also grow from it. The, the, the savior for this country is in agriculture. And the agriculture policy must be looked and urgently, just like we have looked at the infrastructure. Our main mandate at, at Egerton University, the team from Egerton University, is to grow the body of information, organic information. We put it together, make it available on the digital platform now, which is available, even farmers can access it using a smartphone and uh, carry out research on uh, challenges, uh, you know, scientific research on challenges as a support uh, for the farmers and other producers. That is our main role and uh, uh, we have been doing it. We have carried out a lot of research, even uh, uh, a good example is uh, we did uh, research and we're still continuing. This is ongoing research on um, highland arrow roots or cocoyam. We realize that uh, cocoyam requires uh, water, a lot of water uh, to grow. But now we decided to move cocoyam from the swamp, river banks, to the highland and uh, to use rain fed on cocoyam. It's a big challenge because the crop loves a lot of water. The way the crop loves a lot of water, it also accumulates a lot of heavy metals. 
uh, which are poisonous. And that's why people will be reluctant to buy cocoa or roots on the streets because they are not sure of where it was grown. If it was grown using sewage water or waste water, uh, the chances are the, 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 the root, the, 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 the product itself has a, has a heavy residue. Of, that has already been confirmed uh, scientifically that uh, if you want to clean waste of uh, waste metals, waste from industries, you plant uh, varieties of cocoa and they'll absorb that. Okay, my name is Pauline Mondia and I work for Biovision Africa Trust based in Nairobi and I work in the outreach project where I manage the project. So Biovision Africa Trust is a local NGO that focuses on information dissemination to smallholder farmers on sustainable agriculture and this is done looking at four thematic areas that is plant health, animal health, human health and uh, environmental health. So basically our focus is giving farmers, smallholder farmers information and we do this using various communication pathways. We have the print media, where we have a uh, magazine called uh, the Organic Farmer Magazine that is distributed in Kenya. And we also have a magazine called Mkulima Mbunifu that is uh, distributed in Tanzania. We also have a web-based platform that is called Infonet by Vision. We also do radio programs. One of our key programs is on Radio Maisha. It's called Kilimo High. And we also do programs on community radio stations. We also train farmers directly uh, using extension officers who are based in currently in 11 counties. So as Biovision Africa Trust, we are implementing the Ecological Organic Agriculture Project, which is a continental project that basically tries to mainstream organic agriculture into the agricultural systems. And at Biovision Africa Trust, we play three main key roles in this project. One, we are the coordinating agency that coordinates the activities of the other partners currently in nine countries. Then we also implement some of the activities under some of the pillars. And we are also responsible for the Continental Secretariat, which is under the AU. So for us, in terms of organic agriculture, we see a lot of opportunities for farmers because we know the organic sector is growing a lot in the current days as people are becoming more and more aware of food safety and the issues of uh, consuming healthy and, and clean food. And uh, as we give our farmers information, we realize that the key challenges that our farmers have been facing, one has been to do with the soil. The soils are not fertile enough because they have been uh, destroyed with continuous production and the use of uh, synthetic chemicals. So what we are trying to do in organic agriculture is to promote farmers to build the soil so that it can be able to feed the with the plants and this we do by asking them to do composting or to do soil fertility measures that actually build the soil itself. Another key challenge we've seen with our farmers is markets and basically here it's not that the markets are not available but it's the, actually the market access that has been a challenge because the markets are there but sometimes for the farmers to access the, chal uh, the markets has been, has been the challenge. So through the EOA project, we are working to see how we can help farmers access these markets. One, for example, uh, linking them to the different markets that are there, having them have market dialogues so that they can be able to share with the traders or the marketers to see what, what is available for them. So in terms of opportunities, uh, we are looking at mainly, of course, increasing consumer awareness so that we can be able to build the demand for the farmers because if consumers are able to request or to ask for organic food, then our farmers are going to are going to benefit from that. We are also working with the policy makers in the project through the policy advocacy uh, pillar, where we try to see how we can lobby for more inclusion of organic agriculture support at the national level and also at the county level. And one of the key areas that we are trying to work with is uh, we know that many of the counties are offering subsidized fertilizers for their farmers and we are looking to see how organic fertilizers can also be input in these uh, subsidy programs. Um, okay, in terms of organic markets, I think there has been this, uh, I don't know what to call it, this belief that the organic food is for the elite because if you look at maybe most of our markets actually are in the upmarket areas and in the cities, but it's a narrative that we are trying to debunk by showing farmers that and consumers that actually organic food is good for everybody. So that's why we are looking for models that, for example, the one you talked about in Kangari, where we have in the normal local market, we have a certain area that is specific for 
organic produce. And for us to be able to increase the consumption of organic food, we need to also increase the consumer awareness by having campaigns with consumers to show them that organic is not really expensive because that is usually the what people think it's not very expensive and if the demand is there we know of course if the demand gets greater the prices will also go go down but we also like to help them look at it from a long-term perspective because you would say you're buying food cheaper but it's laced with chemicals for example we know tomatoes have studies have been done especially on tomatoes that have been really laced with chemicals and the farmers don't wait for the uh, interval that is required before they they sell so you say you're saving money today, but the money that you've saved, you take to the hospital because you'll get sick. So trying to change that narrative that we look at the bigger picture, you may pay a premium price for the, for the organic produce, but it's for your health.